you were in the real game. And now you're coming to the place. All this is all this is what God's doing now. He's bringing this together now. You're you're to the place where you're actually one on one, giving the things of God you learned in all these places to other people and changing them. And then I see your your. This is where I knew he was going. You're in the auditorium, and this is where we ate as well as where we had gym class every day. A lot of work to set up that many tables and take them down every day, but that's what they did. And you're up in front of everybody. You're not up on the stage. You want to be down on the floor with them. And you're feeding them, but you're feeding people with the words of life. (laughs) It's funny because I can see that room so clear. I hadn't been in there since sixth grade. You know, I'm 57. That was a heck of a long time ago. But I can see that auditorium like I was in there now. I can even see the curtains are a a dusty green, dark green color. Not very attractive. But um, the school was new, though. I mean, it looked nice. Just ugly color curtains. I hadn't thought of that room in a long time. In this room, the kids are all there. They're sitting. But the teachers are all there, too. All the grown-ups are there, too. So you're not going to teach just babies. Now I see you standing and you're outside. It's after school. And you're in a field. And you're holding this ball. It looks like a glass ball filled with light or fire. And as it gets dark, you just stand, it starts to get dusky and dark, a little bit dark. You hold that ball. (laughs) Then you walk out and you're standing at the entrance of the school with it. You're, what you're doing is, You're being the light that shows them the way home. Hmm. And the light isn't you. The light's what you hold, which is Christ. You couldn't be one of the ordinary people and be able to minister to them the way you're going to. That distance is there for a reason. And it's because of the position you're going to have in people's lives. You're going to be the big brother. You're going to be the daddy to some. You're going to be the uncle. But you're going to be the older and wiser one. You're not going to be one of the one of the kids that play together. You're going to be one of the ones that Helps them grow up. You can't be one of them. That's why you didn't fit in. That's cool. I let, that explains a lot to me, too. I see that whole neighborhood. I don't know why I'm seeing you in my old neighborhood. I haven't even lived in that state since I was 15 years old. But you're like at the entrance to the school and you're like taking it in. I lived blocks away from the school. It was quite a walk. But I had friends. uh, Well, I didn't have very many real friends, but people I played with here and there. I had a couple of good friends in my life, too, when I was in those years. Three good friends. Um, Maybe four. Yeah. Through the years, you know. I mean, not all at once. (laughs) And one friend at a time, usually. But. You're just, you're like a signpost. God's going to use you like a signpost. People are going to come by, and sometimes you're going to think they don't notice you standing there. But they're going to read what you got to say, and it's going to tell them where to go. It's going to tell them where they are. And then they're going to be able to figure out where they're going, where they need to be. That's That's a strong call. And I 
hear these words for you, Matthew. The uncomforted shall be the comforter. You don't like to throw people away. You know what it like, feels like to be thrown away, as do I. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. And it doesn't matter how crappy someone acts. You have a really hard time closing a door in their face. Just completely giving up on them. You can when you're angry, but it doesn't last. You're going to really touch and change a lot of people. There's a man named David Ring, I think his name is. I, I met him. He came to our church. He has cerebral palsy. And he's a minister. One of his favorite lines, and he stammers and stutters and talks badly. You have to listen to hear him. And he says, I have cerebral palsy. What's your excuse? Why aren't you doing anything for God? And that man touched my heart. But it's different what you're going to say. You're not going to say, I'm schizophrenic and look what I do. What's wrong with you? That's not, that's not where your heart is. Your heart is, I'm his, whatever he wants to do to me, with me, through me. But I'm his for you. That's God's heart, Matthew. You have his heart. And you don't see your value or your worth, but heaven does. I've never seen much worth in myself either. I've had a lot of confidence since coming inside out, I'll tell you that. But um, most of my life, I didn't feel pretty. I didn't feel smart. I didn't feel wanted. I didn't feel anything good. Sometimes it's just decades go by and you just realize you're no worse or better than anybody else. We're all in the same boat, but you already know that. You know other people see you as less, but you know that that's not the truth. God's placed mighty things in you. And the hell you've been through in your life was purposeful. It was hard for me to believe that in my life, but it's the truth. It was purposeful. God once said to me real flat out, he said, those 12 years you griped and griped and griped about, he said, where do you think you got to know me? You move in almost every gift of the Spirit there is. I said, when do you think you learned all that? I said, well, why did I have to have that kind of thing where I was afraid and everything? He said, I needed you still. I said, well, why couldn't you just make me still without doing all that? He says, it's the only thing I could have done that would have worked. Or I would have done something else. <clears throat> What you've experienced has given you such a broad vision and compassion for others because you know what it's like to suffer physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally. You understand. You've had everything you love taken away from you, as I have. At different times in your life, you've lost people, you've lost things. But mostly it's been the relationships that's been hard because you're a people lover. You truly love people. And you want to do for them more than you want someone to do for you. So you've, you, you've, you've learned a lesson most people never, ever learn. Even old people don't always learn that one. It isn't all about you. That's a big chunk of what we have to learn on this earth, I believe, is that it's about God and not us. And you've got that one. And you've learned to make friends with things that would be impossible for most people, Matt. And that's not an easy task. You've done that as well. You accept the fact that you're schizophrenic and um, you'll be schizophrenic until God has other plans. And you're okay. You're sorry other people aren't sometimes, but you're okay. Even though it's difficult, you're okay. You're a strong, strong person. Well, that's my word to you, sweet, sweet man. Yeah, um, I'll just stop.